Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well today. Uh, thank you very much for coming to our, our painter webinar, uh, Luminous Pastels. Uh, I want to point out that I have my workspace and my layout set up to make it easy for anyone to follow along. Uh, and underneath the window menu workspace, I have default. And window layout, I have default layout. I just have a little custom palette here that I created by selecting a brush variant, holding down shift and pulling them out into this little palette, which I renamed. Uh, the two images that you see on screen, the one on the left is Floating Orchid 2. And the one on the right is Sunset Sea and with our beloved cat Mariko looking on. Um, both of these are examples of luminous pastels and the, the technique that I'll be talking with you about. And what they have in common is they both have a use of unique complementary colors and they both use contrast in the focal areas of the painting. Uh, I've used softer pastels to lay in color, and then I've used harder pastels to scumble or lay in texture lightly over the top, as you see in the sunset sea here, and as you see in the modeling of the floating orchid too. Okay. I also want to show you the brush category that I have selected here, Pastels and Chalk Share. And what I have done is I've gone to earlier painter brush libraries and I've copied brushes from them uh, into the Painter 2019 brush library. And I'll just show you how I've done that. So I'm going to go to the Painter 11 brush library right here. So right now, Painter is thinking about it, and it's going to the Painter 11 brushes. And I'm going to go down here to the pastels. And let's see, round hard pastel. Let's choose one, round extra soft pastel 20. So I have that chosen in the Painter 11 brush library. And I'm going to go up here to brushes, and I'm going to export this particular brush. And I'm going to copy it to my webinar folder here, variant file, save. OK. Now, to get it into my Painter 2019 library, I need to switch back to the Painter 2019 brushes, like so. And here we are. And now. I can select my little brush category I have made, and I could import it into that library. But I also want to show you how to make your own brush category. So I'm going to go ahead and import this one into this library. There we go. I've navigated to it. I have it selected. I'm going to click Open into Pastels and Chalk Share. There. Uh, now I want to import it again and show you how to make your own category. Import brush. See when we select. When we get this dialog, the Save Variant dialog, you see here's the, the category I just copied it in. But if you want to make your own new brush category, you click the plus sign to add new brush category. And you could say my pastels. Give it the name that you want. Click OK. Now it's going to save that brush variant into your own category. And you'll see that category come in down at the bottom of your brush category list in the brush selector. And you see there's our variant that we copied. And we copied it into this one as well. And we see it here. 
down at the bottom. To create my dry media brushes custom palette, if I want to add this one to it, I could hold down the shift key, click up here, and pull it down into my palette. So now I've added that brush into my palette. If I want to create a custom palette, a brand new one, I just hold down the shift key on my keyboard and pull it out. If I want to rename my custom palette, I can go up to Window, Custom Palette, Organizer, and here, Custom 7, rename it. My pastel, click OK. Done. So now we have another little custom palette. I'm just going to close that for now. OK, I'm going to close this particular painting. And bring this out. I have other the progress of my floating orchid to share with you. Okay, I'm going to double click here. So to begin floating orchid two, I began with a sketch. This is actually a white Cattleya orchid that we have that blooms every year in the in the winter time and spring. So I I did the painting while looking at the orchid. So, but I wanted to give it more of a surreal look. So I I sketched the orchid uh, as if it was floating over the sky and ocean. So this is my first sketch, and to to sketch I use the real fat chalk right here. Let's see. Let me just grab my stylus. I made it smaller. I can do command option and make it smaller. I'm pressing command option or it would be con control alt on the PC. I could size my brush. Or I could go up here to the size and change my size up here. And I'm using basic paper, and that's what I used with this particular one. Okay, I'll open the next stage. So with this one, you see I'm still using the real fat chalk and the basic paper texture, and I have have warmer blue grays and cooler blue grays and a little bit of darker shading down at the bottom. And here I'm starting to model the orchid itself and give some definition to areas of the flower. And I've used the real soft chalk. So we'll go and we'll grab this one from our custom palette. I want to make sure I've restored default variant. And I just hold down, held down the option key or the alt on Windows. And you see how the real soft chalk is actually blending out or covering some of that grain that I had. So this is how I painted these smoother areas of the sky and the flower. And I used this kind of cross hatching and then also to have activity in the color directional strokes and cross hatching when I'm blocking things in. And sometimes I also use, like if I'm using a big brush, which I'll show you later on another image. There. 
a circular stroke stroking pattern so I'm going in circles and I'm painting very lightly so you see the texture coming up if I'm painting heavier then I'm going to flatten out some of that texture okay and for this area right here where I'm showing the definition and the forms of the flower I'm using a smaller version of the brush Okay. Now to blend areas, uh, you know, I have a larger, whoops, let me just go to actual size here, actual size. So you see I've used the real soft chalk and the real hard chalk in this area, the real hard chalk to get this grainy look and the real soft chalk to get the more solid strokes. And then if I'm painting very lightly with the real soft chalk, you know, then I, I get some of the texture. So for the interior of the flower, this is actually the focal point for the painting. So let's look here at a before and after on the blending. So with this one right here, I've used the real pointy blender which is in the blenders category and we can go up here and pick it out blenders real pointy blender then i also had it copied to my little custom palette so we can just go here and i can just blend out some of this texture so i'm working on the grainier one on the left the brush the cursor is kind of small but i hope you can see it And this area, you know, I, I did some blending with too. So I'm, I'm having my strokes follow forms, follow the directions of the form. So with this, I wouldn't be scratching back or scrubbing back and forth like this. I'm going more curved vertically. And with this, you know, the flower is curving like this. So I'm going to want to be pulling my strokes down like this. Here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Are you using the basic? Yes, I can. Are you using basic paper right now? I am. Okay. I am using basic paper. Yeah, I thought I, I, thought I mentioned that earlier. Yeah, I'm okay. using basic paper. Yeah. Um, do people have any questions right now? Is this a good time for any questions? Yeah, so that was one of the questions from Don. And Melissa was wondering, she um, looked into your books and she was wondering if they will be in print again. I, I don't know if they're both only available on Kindle. Oh, um, well, there should be Painter Wow books available and Artist Tablet books. Um, as far as I know, my publisher still has some. Okay. What, was she having trouble finding them? She could go to Peach Pit. Um, oh, okay. Peach Pit Press. All right. Uh, and there should there's a, links on my website, pendarvis-studios.com. And, and I, uh, I, I know that they can be found through some other sellers, but I think sometimes the price, people might be reselling them or something. <laughs> right. um, but, yeah, the book itself. I actually have, if people actually, um, you know, I could actually, I have some extra copies if people could buy a book from me if they wanted to. Okay. Yeah, so, and um, an actual book. I could, I could sign it with a, a nice note. <laughs> okay. So just let me know if you yeah. are interested in that in the questions panel, everybody, and then we can follow up with you after. Um, oh gosh, okay, I have a lot of stuff coming in right now. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. Somebody was noticing, I read this at, earlier, that they noticed that you work with a very small brush. Is there any particular reason 
for that? Or is it just oh. the icon of your brush is set to that format? Oh, okay. Um, well, um, if I'm painting on very large files, then I use very large brushes. But these files, I scaled them for our presentation, so they're a little bit bigger than I do for some of for some presentations and videos because I wanted to be able to zoom in and show grain and detail and have the grain match um, easily, you know, so that I'd be able to replicate um, and answer questions and things like that. So the files are about 1500 pixels or up to 2500 pixels here uh, for our presentation. And the reason this real pointy blender is 16 pixels is because that's the size I need for this particular file. And this is a more of a detailing blender as opposed to some of the other blenders. I hope that answers your question. Okay, I, I, I think it probably does. I'll just wait and see if anything else comes in. Um, then there's also a question, is it better to paint with pastels on a plain paper on the computer and then print it on textured paper? Or do you prefer to add all the texture and the painting and then print on plain paper? Oh, that's a really great question. Thank you, because I do like to send my high-res final files to an artist atelier or I make smaller prints here at my studio. Um, I'm usually using an archival matte paper if I do it myself or a uh, if I order it out from my atelier, um, then they will use something that has just a little bit of texture. And I try to match the texture as much as possible to what I've used in my painting. So like a cold pressed watercolor paper that's treated to handle inkjet prints. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. then sometimes I also add traditional pastel over the top. It depends on the work. Sometimes I finish the work so I feel like it's complete and painter. And sometimes I do something that is a base that I can do pastel, traditional pastel over the top. So I work both ways. Okay. And I believe, I know you okay. mentioned any, but there's some curiosity about how did you start with the background and color? Oh, oh, fantastic. Um, thank you. Uh, there's actually an image that I'm going to show later where we're going to talk about different ways to get a colored background in painter. With this particular painting of the orchid, oh, let me bring up the next stage. With this one, I started with a white background. Uh, there are different ways to create a background. I can just open a new file right here. You see I was using a purple background because I was going to create a, a rosy. So you can choose a colored background here. And these print really nicely too, by the way. You can choose the color here. And you know, if we want it more gray, move this over. We want it more pastel, move this way. So I'm, I'm gonna create a lighter one. So see, it's a little lighter. And then, uh, let's see, let's go back to our real fat chalk. And get my, my color palette's hidden by this. So I just wanna choose a rosy color and I'm gonna make my brush really big. I'm making circular strokes with this 158 odd size brush in its basic paper. 
So this is one way that you can create that luminosity. Now, um, if, if you want to change your paper color, you know, there's not really a complete control. You want to type in numbers, you know, like we saw right here. Let me go here. You know, you can go to sliders. If you know your HSB or RGB or CMYK numbers, you can type them in here. But, you know, that's not, I mean, it's accurate uh, from an illustrator's point of view, but from an artist, you know, who, who feels and sees color, it's, it's not as intuitive as going to the color wheel. But uh, say if you can't get the exact color that you want, you know, there is, you know, you can, let's see, you can go here, choose the color that we want, gray or blue, and then we could say set paper color, command A, delete. See, now we've changed our paper color to the, to the color that we have in the color wheel here in the color panel. So I use that a lot um, to get the color, the, I, the background color that I want. And this is something that is not going to erase. Here I've chosen the eraser. This isn't going to erase. We can continue to apply color over it. Does any, anyone have any questions about the paper color? I think we're good with the paper color. There was one other question. Um, uh -huh. I don't believe you did, but did, was there any cloning involved for the sketch when you made it? Oh, no, uh -uh. no. Like I said, I was sketching from the actual orchid. I brought my potted orchid in from our back patio, and I had it sitting on the desk when I sketched the Okay. When I did and the sketch. You mentioned that they're on a yeah, page. Yeah, that was this one. Okay. Um, sometimes. Well, what happened? We're oh. having a little bit of a delay. Every time I try to talk, it's really delayed. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, when you do draw or paint on top of the print, do you then use anything to seal it? Oh, um, well, being a traditional pastel artist for many years, um, well, some years ago I experimented with sealing it and I found that it changes the contrast and the color. So I decided that I was no longer going to attempt to seal my charcoal, my traditional charcoal and my traditional pastel or chalk paintings. And what I do is when they're framed, I have a spacer put in. And that way, any particles <clears throat> that may float down won't get on the mat. So you just have to have enough space between the glass and the pastel itself. And then also put that spacer in, in between the artwork and the mat. Yeah. And then don't lay it face down. I had a situation where I was taking a pastel to an art show and someone put my piece face down and I, I had to get the mat cleaned and everything. I had to take it all apart and clean the mat. So, you know, um, have it upright or laying on its back and and they're 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 fine. They've held up really fine. Okay, that's great oh. advice there. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, uh, you're welcome. Also I wanted to mention that when you have your pieces professionally printed at an atelier or if you have a high-end printer that has good longevity for the inks, then uh, always frame them with, with uh, glazing that will protect them, UV protective glazing okay. or glass because your prints will, will look bright and wonderful for many, many, many years, and you'll be offering a much better value to your clients also. 
Okay, and one more question, and then I'll let you get back to it. What tablet are you using? Okay. Did you hear that? Okay, what right now I'm just going to close this. Pardon? What tablet? Yes, I did. Uh, I, I have used uh, a lot of different tablets and displays in the Wacom line. I've actually used Wacom tablets since a beta of the very first tablet and a beta of the first painter. I was so happy. Um, and I just have to share my amazement for painter and the tablet to this day because this was in the early 90s. And it blew my mind then coming from a traditional artist and illustration background. And it still blows my mind to this day in 2019. <laughs> Um, that we can actually paint with such realistic brushes and textures and that we're painting on a computer. We can have a complete digital artist studio within our computer. It's really remarkable, um, fantastic technology, very user friendly. Um, right now I'm using an Intuos Pro and tablet and it is a medium sized tablet and I like that because I can put the tablet on my lap when I'm sketching instead of having it on a desk and it feels very natural to me because I like to sketch in my sketchbooks and a lot of times I have them on my lap rather than on a desk or my drawing table. I have used Cintiq, uh, uh, the small Cintiq uh, the 13 inch, I had one for uh, a, quite a while. Uh, and then also a 24 uh, Cintiq Touch. But I found that my eyes, and this is only personal to me because I know that um, a lot of our artist friends love their Cintiqs and they like that they can actually draw on screen. Well, my eyes are a bit more sensitive to bright light. And it's just like when I'm outside, I, I wear polarized sunglasses um, unless I'm surfing and then I, I wear a little visor. <laughs> but um, yeah, my eyes, uh, drawing on screen um, and being so close to all that light actually um, tired my eyes a lot faster. So I found that for me personally, I prefer the the Intuos Pro tablet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. And I'll let you go ahead. I know there's a few questions. Yeah. In here, um, but I'll wait and see if you address those soon. Um, people are wondering about layers, how you use okay. them. And do you have a typical size document? Oh, okay. Yeah, so go ahead and and then we'll open up oh. and again. Okay. Okay, well, let me address a few of those and then I'll, I'll go uh, to the final file in the Floating Orchid series that I was going to show. Uh, I don't have a typical file size because if I'm creating something for on screen, it might be 900 pixels wide or 1500 pixels wide. Uh, if, if I'm creating an illustration that's going to be printed, offset printing, then I'm going to want to know the dimensions that it's going to be used by my client or the publication. And then I'm going to be want to know the line screen that they're using. If it's 150 line screen to print, then I'm going to be working at 300 pixels per inch by whatever dimension. So that's if it's an illustration that's going to print. If, for instance, I wanted to create my orchid so that I could print it uh, high resolution to a um, art atelier, uh, say I wanted it to be 24 inches tall by, you know, like six, I'm not sure if the, this is actually the proportions, but it might be 16 inches wide by 24 inches tall. Uh, then I would set up my file. If I knew it was only going to inkjet, I'd set up my file with, um, let's see, I'd go inches, height 24, width 
let's go 18, and then 150 pixels per inch because if I'm just printing it with to, to a high-end inkjet, then 150 pixels resolution is plenty for a very nice inkjet print. And you'll be able to see all of your brushwork, all of the paper grain and blending and everything that you have modeled into your piece. Okay. Now, uh, like a natural feeling if, if I'm doing a fine art piece say like this the floating orchid 2 I like a natural feeling um, it's 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 different than if I were working with an illustration for a client where I had to isolate objects on individual layers that's a totally different type of thinking than you know I'm using when I'm painting something like this so with painting something like the orchid or the sunrise sea you saw earlier i'm painting on the canvas as much as possible because i want to emulate as if i were working on a traditional canvas or traditional piece of paper and it's fun for me to do that uh, now i do like to use the capabilities of layers when i'm getting to a more finished state. Just pause for a second here. Oh, get rid of it. Oh, I'm sorry. Stupid dialogue boxes up there. Um, anyway, um, with this, let me move this. Okay. Okay. You see here, I've created a layer for modeling because this is my final stage. I'm going to turn that off. You see how I've deepened the color? And for additional highlights here. So let me turn these off again. This was the previous version. There's my modeling. So what I did is I used the lasso tool to select my orchid on the canvas. And then I also use the, the masking capabilities to, to clean up the edges and things like that. Then I lifted a copy of my image to the layer. So you see right here. And then I painted more or actually richer, modeled richer colors into it. And I again, I used the real fat chalk, the real soft chalk, and the, let's see, the real soft chalk, real hard chalk for the texture, and the real fat chalk. And then the blending was done with a real pointy blender. Does anyone have questions about the layers? No, we're all good now. No? Nope, we're good. Okay, thank you very much. All right, great. Okay, I want to bring up this piece. Let's see. This little pastel was painted with one brush and that is the worn square pastel from the painter 2019 library and uh, tanya mentioned earlier that i made uh, many of the brushes that are in painter and yes all of the brushes that i've showed today are among the, the brushes that i made uh, the worn square pastel is one of my favorites so I wanted to show some of how I created this simple pastel. It was really inspiring. You know, we've, we've been having some really gorgeous sunrises and I used color. Let me just open this reference image. I'm sorry about this dialog box. Let me just get rid of it. It's gonna bug us here. Okay, I'm going to choose my reference, let me see, okay, 
this particular image right here is what I used for some other in the little abstract. So, okay. Actually, I'm going to open my earlier version. So what you see right here, I can just delete, delete that so that way we don't have to go through and create a whole new file. So what I did is, is I didn't want to copy this particular sunrise piece, but I did want to use some of the color that's in it. And I'm painting really light. I'm going to reduce the size of my brush a little bit. And I don't want to make it all solid, just, and we can adjust over here, warm it up a little bit. But this, these bright pinks and golds on the dark blue, you know, twilight are what I like to think of as luminous color. Now I can choose a blue gray. It's kind of more purple. And can just create a horizon line. Whoop. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to mount my canvas so that doesn't happen again. Command M, Control M. I'm going to size my brush smaller. So this is basically the process that I use to, let's get the next one, to get to my second stage. So I use that circular painting technique and I'm very lightly on my stylus. Uh, and I just want to emphasize how important brush tracking is, preferences, brush tracking. Very important to set your brush tracking so the input of your hand is communicated to painter. And I also wanted to point out, you see the little dot on my cursor there? I'm using a 60 art pen so um, I can actually rotate my brush. Yeah. So here um, I have the luminous sky in, and then uh, I'm starting to paint in the reflections down in the bottom. And this one here in the final. I've used a very small worn pastel and I've added my little boats horizon, a little light off in the distance. And this is all done with this one brush. Actually, it's my worn pastel. Oh, this 
sorry, I had the real fat chalk still, that's why the texture wasn't the same. So you see with this, this brush is more oval, it's like a worn flat brush and you see changing right here. We want to make our brush very small. And then choose a very light pink. We can add more of the little wind marks. Say there was a little breeze close to shore. With this particular one, I did use some layers. So let me, so you'll see that was my signature. Here we have the boats and the light. Here we have the light shining down in the center. Do people have questions? Let's see. Um, they are wondering, so when you're painting lightly, is that the yes. pressure that you're placing on the tablet or did you make adjustments yes. to the brush options? I, I'm sorry, the last part was a little broken up. Did I make adjustments too? Yeah, they're wondering, is it solely the default brush setting and then you press lightly or did you make slight adjustments to the brush? That is a great question. Thank you very much. I wanted this webinar and tutorial for anybody to be able to load their new version of Painter bring up a default, the default layout and def default workspace and follow along and learn. So for these particular brushes, I didn't, I didn't make any changes to them. Um, I set my brush tracking like I just um, showed you and I just changed the size as I was working. So here we are on this particular layer. Let's go to this layer. Okay, I could add, um, I could make my brush larger. And we could bring this. So I'm just pressing very lightly. Let's choose. I'm just pressing lightly on my tablet. Oops. very lightly. And I'm using painting with a circular motion. You can see my adding some more clouds. About the clouds, did you sample colors yes. in your photo or did you just select your own colors? Yep. Both. I used this as a starting point because I really love these pinks and peaches and everything. They're just so vibrant. And this is a sunrise recently here um, at Ocean Beach. And then I thought it would be fun to use some of the colors, but then paint something completely different. And then I'm also making some adjustments here in the color panel. And the reason I used different layers is because I was doing some experimenting. You know, what I might do if I were going to continue on with this piece would be to combine some of my layers. You know, say I like what I did. 
I like that we added this cloud right here and we brought this one down a little more. I like that. Maybe I might combine a few layers under the sky and then paint on them so I don't end up with a list of 30 or 40 layers. Unless, you know, but if it was a commercial job, I might need those 30 or 40 layers. I might need it all separate. <laughs> so say, for instance, if I was um, illustrating, doing like a wildlife illustration or doing um, a map or something like that, I may need all those layers to be separate. Okay. But when we're painting, um, yeah, when we're doing fine art um, and exploring things, uh, compositions um, for our own joy, then, you know, we can either use layers or not, depending on what our mood is. Yeah, and we can be free, free to enjoy painting and playing with painter. Uh, painter is really limitless with what we can create. You know, with all the different media that we have, um, we look at all of the, you know, acrylics and gouache, airbrushes, artist oils, you know, the newer technology like the dab stencils, dynamic speckles. Uh, you know, I love all of those. I, I, I love artist oils, in fact, very, very much. Um, and then, you know, the watercolor and so on. But, um, Pastels and chalk, uh, the dry media are still one of my favorites, one of my favorite types of brushes to use, and they are so very realistic. The texture is just fun, and we can create such vibrant color and texture with them. It's, it's very pleasing. Do you have any suggestions? If you don't have an art brush, can you accomplish the same types of strokes regardless that you're creating here? You can. Um, let me grab my other pen. Okay. Now I've got the grip pen. With the grip pen, you see I'm rotating it, but you see it, since it's tilt and bearing, so see the little indicator in the center? See it leaning? So um, although when I rotate it, the dot at the top's not moving, but you still have a lot of creative control. We can add more clouds. I'm going to make a band of cloud across here. See, you can create beautiful brush strokes with the grip pen. I just wanted to explain the art pen as well. Yeah. Do you typically And I wanted to mention that to get my crisp Yes? Uh-huh. <laughs> what? I'm sorry the Pardon? delay. Do you use There seems to be a bit of a delay. Yeah. The worn square pastel is that what you use yes. to normally make clouds with? Oh, um, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> Painter has many great brushes for painting clouds. This For this particular painting, I used only the Warren Square Pastel. So, um, but sure, experiment with it, and then let's see. Let's go up to chalk pastel and crayons. Um, the worn square pastel, um, square hard pastel, um, the the round hard pastel, if you want the grain like this, uh, is good. And you can find that in the Painter 11 library, which I showed you um, how to go and get. Uh, and then also, um, when I was demonstrating an, on the earlier version of this piece earlier, I was using the real fat chalk. And it has a different type of a grain. Um, 
it handles grain a little bit differently. Let me just increase its size. But as you see, it's grainier, but maybe you want a little more grain. I'll increase the contrast. We can make, we can add sparkle. Say maybe there's some at, more at, uh, excuse me, uh, humidity in those clouds. So now I'm using the rock. It's a grainier look. It adds that sparkle, additional sparkle. And then back to the Warren Square Pastel. I hope I answered your question. Yes, it looks that way. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Do do folks have any more questions? Uh, uh, did you fully understand how to navigate to uh, another brush library? That's something I really wanted to show you in, in addition to some of my pastel techniques. But uh, coming up to the brush selector, choosing the Painter 11 brushes, and then exporting a brush that you want to use, and then bringing it into Painter. I, I wanted everybody to be able to, to uh, understand that well. Because it's so valuable. I mean, there's so many brushes. You know, once you've explored all of the fantastic brushes in Painter 2019, or maybe even your favorites, maybe you're someone like myself who just loves dry media and pastels. So, you know, may want to focus on those now. So, you want to go through these earlier libraries and look at uh, and try out pastels and chalk and so on, other dry media that may not be in the Painter 2019 brush library. The Painter 11 brushes um, is an earlier library, but it has many, many um, brushes before um, the categories were trimmed down. You know, sometimes less is more. You know, it's easier to manage, but this is an elegant solution. Uh, that allows us to access the earlier libraries as, as well as have the Painter 2019 brush library, like more lean and main, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I'm trying to go through the questions here, Cher, just to ensure that we got to everything. Um, Somebody did Great. ask, you may have answered this already, but do you prefer printing uh -huh. on paper or on canvas? Oh my goodness, that is a great question. Thank you for asking that. I prefer paint, uh, excuse me, uh, printing my painter work on paper because I think it's more realistic. I have had quite a few prints done on canvas and I've done the canvas wrap and I've had the um, UV protective coating put on it and I've had it framed like that. But over many years, the prints um, can deteriorate faster than the prints on paper. So uh, I think that if I print it on canvas again, I would put it under UV glazing uh, and it might be because I live near the beach and so sometimes we get quite a bit of humidity. But then again, I am in California and our uh, humidity is lower here than some, some of our friends um, have in the south and the southeast like in Florida, Georgia and so on. You know, they, are, they have higher humidity. So, um, and the... The prints I'm talking about are 10 or more years old. So um, I replaced the, one of those for one of my clients uh, because, uh, you know, I was surprised if the print itself was supposedly guaranteed from a professional atelier, but it did get a little spotty after about 10 years. 
you know, and I want people, you know, that purchase my work to have something that they can enjoy for many years to come. So, you know, uh, I may use a painter work as a basis for oil paint and then do com completely paint over the top and then seal it. And I've had good results with that. I haven't had any of the peeling or flaking um, that happened. Well, actually, it was a little flaking and a little spotty fading in a few areas that happened with the print that was on canvas that was more than 10 years old. Yeah, so uh, I like the look of paper and I like the look of a, a matted work. So uh, that's typically how I've been doing mine over the last oh, maybe 10 years, you know, since I ran into the issues with the with the printing on canvas. Yeah. I do have to say a lot of people are very interested in learning more about the printing process. Which printer do you use? Uh -huh. Do you have recommendations? What is UV glazing? It's more than we could even cover right now because we're at the top of the hour. Right. But right, okay. I use a, right now, um, uh, a friend was printing my work for a number of years and he was using high-end Epson 9600s and he's since uh, moved to San Francisco and so we're not working together as much so I'm using Pixel 2 which is in San Diego County and they do beautiful prints. I've just had them do prints on paper and like the cold pressed watercolor paper like I mentioned that's um, enhanced to be able to handle Epson inks and they use uh, similar uh, Epson printers to what Jim was using. Um, large, um, I believe they're 9600, 9800. Um, they're large printers and they do a proofing process with me. I, I do a proof um, on my home printer and I have an Epson 4800 um, and I have a newer one that's a, excuse me a minute. I believe it's the Epson 15000. Um, it's a dye based. Uh, it doesn't have the longevity of the pigment-based inks. I had a 2000P some years ago um, until, un until it wore itself out. That particular um, ink set with the Epson 2000P, the prints, the smaller prints I made on it, it printed 13 by 19, and, and those still look great, you know, um, 15 plus years later and they were on paper, on the Epson paper. And the UV glazing, it's a glass that's a little bit more expensive than regular glass. And most um, framers have it, and you, you actually can, you know, if you wanna do your own framing, you can order that glass from an art store um, or framing supplier. Yes, you know, so for my studio, my newer, printer is a die base printer and it it doesn't have quite the longevity of uh, a die base I, I'm sorry excuse me of, as a pigment base does but the jets are much easier to maintain um, the newer uh, pigment based print printers you have to print a lot in order to keep the uh, jets clear which is why um, I don't have a large format printer here because I'm not doing a lot of, I mean, big ones, you know, say, um, like the professional houses are, you know, I'm, I'm not printing every day. You really need to print every day to keep the jets clear or at least a few times a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why I order my large prints from a professional atelier. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. 
Yes, I, I believe it does. And I'm getting a lot of thank you shares, being so well prepared and as usual, teaching us all a ton. And thanks to everybody for joining us here today. Thank you very much, Tanya. I appreciate you very much. We've worked together for so many years, and it's always a pleasure and a treat. It's wonderful to hear your voice. And, and everyone out there, thank you so much for coming. It's really great to have you all. And, and I'm sending this, this brilliant ocean beach sunrise out to you. Um, you know, with warm wishes and uh, happy painting, everyone. Mm -hmm.